So bring it on. If you think you've got what it takes to stand up against me with science, go for it. Okie dokie, Nephilim free. I think I can give that a go. Especially seeing as you now seem to the backing of Conservopedia. I mean, let's just entertain your conservopedian creationist concept for a moment. That all the craters on the moon were caused by Noah's flood. Whoa, hold on, Thunderfoot. I never said all of the craters on the moon were created by the flood. What you're attempting to do here is put words in my mouth so that you can argue against them. That's a dishonest tactic called creating a straw man argument. And it's a failure. Surely this means that we should find all sorts of desiccated sea life on the moon. You know, whales, walruses, winkles, that sort of thing. But we've been to the moon half a dozen times. We sent geologists to the moon, and they brought back the best part of a third of a ton of moon rocks, and they found no signs of sea life on the moon at all. And they found no signs of sea life on the moon at all. No signs of sea life on the moon at all. But Thunderfoot, they have found Earth life on the moon in Earth Rocks, from the Journal of Cosmology, 2010. Bacteria and Earth oceanic organism microfossils on the Moon in rocks which got to the Moon from the Earth. Now, how do they claim that those rocks got there? Well, Sky Mania Astronomy and Science Guide states, Fossils of early life on Earth are lying on the surface of the Moon, a top biologist claims today. Professor Peter Ward of the University of Washington in Seattle states, the lunar surface is littered with rocks blasted out of our planet by asteroid impacts. And in space.com Tons of rocks and dust long ago blasted from Earth by asteroid impacts lay on the Moon's surface. So what is the creationist explanation for the craters on the Moon? And there's Slenderfoot's straw man argument, attempting to claim that I have claimed that all of the craters on the moon were created by the flood. But let's continue, shall we? So what is the creationist explanation for the craters on the moon, at least from the creationist promoted by Conservopedia? Recently I made a video discussing the evidences of the Milwaukee flood, some of the evidences, a few of them. And uh, in that video I explained that the Earth split open at the mid-Atlantic ridges uh, which run around the Earth like a, the seam of a baseball, and the great pressure of the crust of the Earth, six miles of it, on, on this water, caused the water to eject from the Earth at supersonic speed. Much of this water escaped the escape velocity of the Earth and headed toward the Moon, where the Moon's gravity accelerated it, and the Moon was pelted by water frozen, from the, uh, frozen water, which came from inside the Earth at the beginning of the Noachian flood. Oh dear. So the other side of the argument, the creationist side, is that the craters on the moon were caused by Noah's flood. There's that dishonest straw man again, the craters on the moon, as if creationists believe all of the craters on the moon were created by the flood. Let's continue. For a long time, you see, we've had a good idea of the energies required to escape from the Earth. And these are typically expressed as escape velocities. That is, the speed you need to give an unpowered object for it to leave the gravitational influence of, in this case, the Earth. And in the case of the Earth, escape velocities are typically on the order of 10 kilometers per second. A speed that would get you from New York to L.A. in less than the time it takes you to watch this video. So for Conservopedia's man to be correct, his water needs to get a muzzle velocity of about 30 times the speed of sound. But Thunderfoot, in order to explain away these earth rocks with the earth life in them that are found on the moon, secular astronomers are now saying, as here on space.com, tons of rocks and dust long ago blasted from earth by asteroid impacts 
lay on the moon's surface and could hold secrets to our home planet's early history and the origin of life. You see, they're stating to explain these rocks away, because you know the flood can't be real. It couldn't have happened. They're saying that the Earth was struck by asteroids, and that the energy from this asteroid caused rock to eject from the Earth to the moon. And yet here you are arguing that these rocks and water, this ice that we find across the moon and in craters, couldn't have come from the Earth because it couldn't achieve escape velocity. But that's exactly what these secular astronomers are saying, that it did achieve escape velocity. They just choose a different method by which it happened, because of course they must deny the flood as all godless materialists, naturalists, humanists, atheists do. But I'm afraid it only gets worse. The moon is a tiny target. It's only about half a degree in diameter, which means that if you throw a escape velocity object in a random direction, you only have about a one in a hundred thousand chance of actually hitting the moon. But Thunderfoot, that's exactly what happened. You see, the water that NASA found on the moon was in the only place where you can get water on the moon, in the frigid, permanently shadowed craters of the lunar poles. But Thunderfoot, you're wrong again, and you're spewing false information once again. The moon's water comes in three flavors, according to secular astronomers. Here we see. So far we've found three types of moon water said Paul Spurtis of the Lunar and Planetary Institute in Houston, Texas. We have many SARS thick lenses of nearly pure crater ice, Lacrosse's fluffy mix of ice crystals and dirt, and M-Cube's thin layer that comes and goes all across the surface of the moon. They have found water that covers a large percentage of the entire surface of the moon. Now granted, it's very thin. But you said water exists only in craters on the moon. That's not true. The moon has been blasted with water which covered the majority of the moon's surface facing the Earth. But wait, there's more. They find at least two different types of layers of ice on the moon. The first, they state, is dirty. It contains sulfur dioxide, methanol, and organic molecules. It extends to 0.5 meters and is to a depth of at least 0.5 meters and is probably older than the ice we're finding on its surface, which they state is relatively pure. This is exactly what we would expect to see if the Earth split open and ejected this water, which then pelted the moon. You see, the dirty ice comes first, then the water that's more pure. It fits the global flood model to a T. You see, Thunderfoot, these things can only be explained by the Flood. They can't be explained by the secular theories. Everything we're learning about this points directly to the Flood of Noah. Now we see Thunderfoot mocking my prediction that we will find... Now we see Thunderfoot mocking my prediction that we may find Earth life in the ice on the Moon, which of course is a completely sound hypothesis considering we've already found earth rocks on the moon with earth life in them. Why would we not expect then to find earth life in the ice on the moon as well? But you see Thunderfoot is like the typical layperson evolutionist relatively ignorant of science. Didn't know that there was ice across the moon until he learned it from my video. Didn't know that there were earth rocks on the moon with earth life in them, even oceanic life, fossils. And now he mocks my prediction th that they may find earth life in the ice on the moon. If NASA makes a trip to the moon and they recover some of this ice, they're liable to find plankton and bacteria inside that ice. Plankton and bacteria inside that ice. So let's recap. Thunderfoot didn't know there was ice on the moon until he learned it from a video of mine. He's, he still claims that there's only ice in craters on the moon, which is false. It's spread out across the surface of the moon facing the Earth. He didn't know that there were Earth rocks on the moon, which contain 
earth life forms, even oceanic life forms. And he didn't know that the secular people explain away these rocks by claiming that asteroids struck the earth and ejected those rocks to the moon, which demonstrates that his argument against the escape velocity of the earth being great enough for this water to strike the moon is false. And he begs the question, why do people laugh at creationists? <laughs> Thunderfoot, people aren't laughing at creationists. They're laughing at evolutionists. They laugh at this 2 to 3 percent of the world's population, although it may be smaller, of people who deny the existence of God and put forth materialist explanations for everything. Those are the people the world is laughing at. People like yourself, who don't know any of these things, learn them from creationists, then attempt to deny them, and beg the question, why do people laugh at creationists? We sent geologists to the moon, and they brought back the best part of a third of a ton of moon rocks, and they found no signs of sea life on the moon at all. And they found no signs of sea life on the moon at all no signs of sea life on the moon at all. Now Thunderfoot, what will happen if my prediction holds true and when they examine the ice on the moon they find earth life forms in it as well? Will you deny this scientific evidence too from secular sources as well? And will you continue to make videos in which you beg the question why do people laugh at creationists? Somehow I think you will.